Yes, uh, would you show me some sports jackets, please? No, I won't personally, sir, but I'll summon our senior assistant to attend to your wishes. Uh, Mr. Granger, are you free? <clears throat> oh, yes, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> That is a, a guard's tie you're wearing, sir, isn't it? No, it's the Tesco Table Tennis Club, actually. <laughs> <laughs> table tennis. Yes, the stripe is a little narrower. <laughs> yes, uh, Captain Peacock. Uh, something in the sports jacket line for this customer. With plenty of room under the arms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I would think a 44, wouldn't you, Mr. Humphreys? Yes, certainly, Mr. Granger, a 44. Don't you think so, Mr. Lucas? I hope so. We haven't got anything bigger. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, recommend a check, sir, you know. It is apt to make the figure a little more portly, don't you agree, Mr. Humphreys? We've only got checks in 44. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, of course, uh, sir, you have got the height to carry it off. <laughs> 44 check, Mr. Lucas. Well, 44 check coming up, Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> yes, uh, this range... Uh, he is in Pushcorn, isn't it, Mr. Humphrey? Right, first time, Mr. Granger. 35% wool, 35% Pushcorn. Well, that only makes 70%. Yes, well, there's a lot of air between the fibres, sir. <laughs> allows the fabric to breathe. Isn't that right, Mr. Lucas? Quite right, Mr. Humphreys. If you listen quietly, you can hear it, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lucas. We've got old cupboard full over there, panting for breath. <laughs> the mirror, Mr. Lucas. One mirror coming up, Mr. Granger. All right. What do you think, Mr. Humphreys? Well, it's uh, nice and snug in the front. It's a very snug indeed. <laughs> Why don't you have a look at the back? <laughs> as I'm sure the back is snug as well. <laughs> yeah. It does feel a little tight. We'll try breathing in and out a little tight. <laughs> Better, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that feels much better. Is it um, hard wearing? Oh, very hard wearing, sir. Yes, they discovered Pushcon while they were developing the Concord. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you're thinking of going through the sound barrier, you couldn't have chosen better. <laughs> How much is it? It's thirty pounds, including VAT. It does seem rather a lot. Well, when you consider it costs five hundred million to develop, I think it's quite reasonable, sir. <laughs> Still, seems an awful lot of money. Actually, sir, it has been reduced from 42 pounds. Oh, is that so? So you're saving 12 pounds, sir. I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Sale, <laughs> Mr. Hunter. Well, yes, Mr. Lucas. Well done, Mr. Granger. <laughs> Miss Brooks, the bridal veil with the blue orange blossom. Yes, Mrs. Slack. And where is Madam going for her honeymoon? Well, we're torn between Eastbourne and Brighton. It is difficult to make up one's mind, isn't it? It is. Why not compromise and try beat your head? <laughs> <laughs> How's that? It's a bit <laughs> thick, isn't it? <laughs> well, it looks lovely from our side. <laughs> someone holding your arm. <laughs> he won't recognise me. Well, he'll lower your voice, won't he? Think of the surprise he's going to get when he lifts it up. <laughs> That'll do, Miss Browns. Uh, the orange blossom is detachable, should Madam wish to use it for decorative purposes afterwards. I suppose I'd better take it. Pack it up, Miss Browns. I've not said anything. <laughs> Pack the veil up, girl. <laughs> Psst! Oi! Is that the way you usually attract a lady's attention, Mr. Mash? No. Usually I'll go up behind them and go, Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> you going to old Granger's farewell dinner tonight, are you? It eh? is not his farewell dinner, Mr. Mash. Just because he's 65, it doesn't mean he's retiring. If they give him a cuckoo clock, it does. That's what they did to old Fredericks down in Hardware. Forty-four years he'd been with the firm. They had the dinner, and when they got to the coffee, they gave him the clock, one chorus of he's a jolly good fellow, and shoved him in the lift. <laughs> Here, six pairs of tights, and six pairs of pussy boots. Six pairs of what? Pussy boots. Fur slippers. <laughs> and we got a new sales gimmick as well for him. Here, look at that. Whatever's that? One electric pussy. 
<laughs> Battery operated. <laughs> Pussy boots, pussy boots. How could anyone do that to a cat? You want to thank your lucky stars, mate? You ain't selling elephant eyed luggage. <laughs> I'd have a good mind to write to the RSPCA. We're well, a bit late. It's dead. <laughs> Captain Peacock, just look what they've sent me. It's disgusting. Would you like to see it working, Captain? Very well. <laughs> pussy boots, pussy boots. You must admit it's a, it's a novelty, Mrs. Slogan. Pussy boots. Pussy boots. Amusing, Captain. Very amusing. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum, uh, Mr. Granger has gone to his coffee break, so this will seem to be a good opportunity to discuss his birthday dinner. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Miss Brahms, come along. Uh, Mr. Humphreys, are you free? Yes, I'm free, Captain Peacock. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, are you free? Uh, yes, I think I am free just at this precise moment, Captain well, Peacock. Gather round. Now, I've had a word with the canteen manager. And it would seem that the most economical way of staging this function is to hold the dinner down here. Oh, poor Mr. Granger. Can't we give him a proper do in the restaurant upstairs? Well, that would cost us an extra one pound per head. Let's have it down here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have it at the scene of his triumphs. Now, the uh, menu would be as follows. The vegetable soup or hors d'oeuvre. That's a sardine on a bit of tired lettuce. <laughs> And the Russian salad, Mr. Mr. Oh, Lucas. Oh, I've forgotten the Russian salad, Captain Peacock, yes. I shall never forget the Russian salad. <laughs> yeah, a main course, which I shall bring up later. Won't we all? <laughs> Cabinet pudding with custard or simulated cream, <laughs> coffee ad lib, and one after eight mint. And how much is that lot? The cost, Miss Brahms, depends upon what we choose as a main course. Now, a roast pheasant would be two pounds per head, Poulet roti. You what? Roast chicken. <laughs> one pound fifty. Steak pie, one pound twenty-five. Or macaroni cheese, one pound. I vote for macaroni cheese. <laughs> we can't give the poor old soul a dinner with macaroni cheese. Well, he'd prefer it. Once he gets those teeth of his stuck into a pheasant, he'll be here all night. <laughs> Have the canteen steak pie. We'll all be here all night. <laughs> I'll go for the macaroni cheese myself. Well, I think we should give him the chicken. Any other votes for chicken? Yes, I'll vote for chicken. It goes so well with the cabinet pudding and simulated cream. <laughs> well, I, I favour chicken myself, so that's uh, three votes for chicken and two for macaroni cheese. And the steak pie loses its deposit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that means we have chicken. That'll be uh, £1.50 per head. Never mind, Shirley, you and me can share the wishbone. <laughs> I know what you're going to wish for. And even if he wins, he won't guess it. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, one pound fifty, of course, does include Mr. Granger and his good lady wife. Uh, is anybody else bringing any guests? No. No, no. I think it's better to keep it intimate. Mm, we're not adverse to a little intimacy, are we, Mr. No, L Mr. Upton. <laughs> <laughs> we could invite the galloping gourmet. If he took one look at that menu, he'd gallop the other way. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lucas. Now, then, as regards dress, I think uh, uh, black tie. What? Nothing else. <laughs> I think it's morbid, these farewell dinners. Miss Browns, we do not know that it is a farewell dinner. That is up to our manager, Mr. Rumbo. It's only a farewell dinner if you get a cuckoo clock. Then you drag yourself home for the last time, stick it on the mantelpiece, and watch the rest of your life tick away. <laughs> and the way old Granger was staggering around this morning, they could save money and give him an egg timer. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lucas. Right, back to your places, everyone. Now, Miss Browns, have I missed anything? No, 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 Mr. Granger. We were just discussing the menu for your dinner. Oh, yes. I, I do hope we're not going to have steak pie. I I'm travelling home on a non-corridor train. <laughs> a chicken, actually. Oh, good. Yes, I, I remember Mr. Fredericks had the chicken. But unfortunately, he also had the cuckoo clock. I'm sure that Grace Brothers will require your services for many years to come. Is that official, Stephen? No, no, I just know it's not in my hands. That's up to our manager, Mr. Rumbold. 
menswear. <laughs> Are you free, Mr. Granger? Uh, yeah, yes, I am free. You're wanted in Mr. Rumbold's office. Oh. I wonder what that's about. Oh, it's probably not nothing to do with that at all, Ernest. Uh, well, whatever will be, will be. I've had very many very happy years. Yeah. Now, look, you know very well that if Grace Brothers were going to announce your retirement, young Mr. Grace would attend the dinner personally. Isn't he coming? Off the record, I have not been so informed. Oh, good. Enter. that you wanted to see me, sir. Did I? Ah, uh, uh, yes. It's about young Mr. Grace. Oh, yes. He won't be attending your dinner tonight. Oh, good. <laughs> Unfortunately, he has a very bad cold. Oh, you mean if he hadn't got a cold, he would be there? Well, when someone has been here as long as you have, Mr. Granger, uh, how long is it now? I, I joined Grace Brothers in 1937 on the day that Mr. Baldwin resigned. <laughs> resigned from Grace Brothers? No, no, he, he handed over to Mr. Chamberlain. <laughs> ah, Chamberlain of China and Glass. <laughs> the Prime Minister. He wasn't at Grace Brothers, was he? <laughs> the Mr. Chamberlain who went to Munich. Oh, I didn't know we had a branch there. <laughs> He haven't. He went to see Hitler. What, Mr. Chamberlain of China and Glass? I have been at Grace Brothers for 37 years. <laughs> yes, and I'm looking forward to your dinner. We're having the chicken. Oh, good, good. Mr. Fredericks had the steak pie. No, he had the chicken too, but unfortunately, he had the cuckoo clock as well. Uh, uh, yes, the, uh, the cuckoo clock. Well, uh, that will be all, Mr. Granger. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rumbold. <laughs> Did I hear something ticking? Ticking? Uh, no, 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 I don't think so. Um, it must have been the, the, the pipes of the central heating system oh. expanding. Good. <laughs> Granger, whatever's the matter? You look as though you've seen a ghost. I, uh, I heard the cuckoo in Mr. Rumbold's office. <laughs> well, 3rd of March, you better write a letter to the Times. <laughs> it was a cuckoo clock. Glass of water for Mr. Granger. Glass of water coming up. <laughs> oh, come, <sir. laughs> Well, I hope someone turns up soon, his bubbles is all drying up. <laughs> now, remember, Mr. Mash, only one glass each. Oh, yeah, we don't want them losing control, do we, eh? <laughs> Mr. James Lucas and Mr. Wilberforce Claiborne Humphreys. <laughs> Hello, Wilberforce. Hello, James. <laughs> To do, Mr. Mash. So sorry we're late, Your Grace, but we stopped off at the Oklahoma Pancake House for a cup of cocoa and a Danish pastry. <laughs> the excitement was all too much. <laughs> there was a lovely bit of Danish crumpet in there as well, but once she heard that we were going to our anniversary dinner, she went off me. <laughs> oh, champagne! Dom Perignon. No, Japanese tinned, extra dry. <laughs> the bubbles don't go up your nose, they give you karate chops. <laughs> Miss Shirley Brahms and the Duchess of Slocum. <laughs> Drinks, ladies? Why not? I think you've had enough. <laughs> Are you suggesting, Miss Brahms, that four vodka martinis are beyond my capacity? <laughs> oh, one of these days, that escalator is going to do somebody a mischief. <laughs> You know what they say about vodka, Mrs. Slocum? One's all right, two's the most, three under the table, four under the host. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Humphreys, what will you say next? Mr. Rumble's the host. <laughs> <laughs> Captain St. 
Stephen Peacock, RASC, C of E, hero at the Battle of Catterick Naffy, old Rudy Hot Cross Bun and Bar. That will do. <laughs> Take it easy. We ain't got no reserves. <laughs> the group are coming up in the other lift. Oh, good. If we got the new seekers. <laughs> I don't think it's the new seekers, love. More like the old knockers. <laughs> good evening. I am Madam Trixie, and this is the Trixie Trio. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Grace Brothers. Oh, champagne. Beer for the bands behind the piano. <laughs> Where do you want the orchestra? Uh, well, over here, ladies, I think. By the uh, piano forte. <laughs> well, Captain Peacock, it looks as though we're going to be able to trip the tight land festival. <laughs> I beg your pardon? She wants you to rip her tight elastic. <laughs> Uh, perhaps you'd better sit down, Mrs. Slocum. We're starting in less than an hour. <laughs> Mr. Rumbolt, uh, since it will affect my speech, is Mr. Granger going to get the clock? Yes, I'm afraid so. And owing to young Mr. Grace's indisposition, I'm going to have to present it. Oh, what a pity he's going. He's such a useful member of the department. Oh, well, we shall have to carry on. Humphreys will have to move up, and we shall have to get another Mr. Lucas. What a terrible thought. Who is? Mr. Granger. The poor old devil. Granger for the chop. Oh, it'll break his heart. Is there anything particular you wish us to play? Ah, uh, uh, yes. Um, when Mr. Granger comes down, I should like you to play something uh, suitable. Certainly. How about goodbye? <laughs> it's a bit sudden, isn't it? What about we don't want to lose you, but we think you ought to go? <laughs> Cheerful like the Rolling Stone. Oh, yeah. This will be the last time. <laughs> uh, might I suggest a fine old English gentleman? Uh, a splendid choice, sir. Oh, stand by. I think Mr. Granger's coming out of the lift. Now, places, everybody. Mrs. Slocum, stand we've by started. <laughs> Make peace and Doris Poland. <laughs> oh, Doris, it must be this is your life. <laughs> Ta. What are you doing here? It's our past sin. We cut to do the floor. But you can't do them now. Go away. If that's how you feel, do it yourself. <laughs> You'll hear from Mr. Hetherington about this. Didn't you speak to Hetherington about this, Peacock? It's not my province, sir. Oh. Lingerie blouses? Right. Mr. and Mrs. Grange were coming up in the lift. This is everybody. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Ernest Granger. <laughs> And Mrs. Granger, in the name of Grace Brothers, welcome to your anniversary dinner. Oh, thank you. Well, they got an orchestra. <laughs> Mr. Fredericks didn't have an orchestra. Perhaps we'll be able to do the Gay Gordons. Mm -hmm. That should round the evening off now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, lords, ladies and gentlemen, take your partners for the tinned vegetable soup. <laughs> Save it on your feet, my dear. <laughs> well, they've certainly given us a night to remember. They certainly have. I'm really glad we didn't have the steak. <laughs> 
look, if you're going to dance with your hand down there, I'm going to sit down. Well, you've got plenty to sit on. Do you like? It's my best feature. <laughs> How potent sheet music is. <laughs> you and I appear to be the only two not dancing. Well, all right, if you promise not to lead. <laughs> I think we'd better get on with the speeches. compliments to the trio, and will you ask them to take an interval? Certainly, sir. Oi! <laughs> Juggius is built up for five minutes. <laughs> All right. I'm really rather puffed. I think it's just as well that I'm going to put my feet up. <laughs> Pray be seated. <laughs> oh, surely, I think the judge is going to pronounce sentence. Oh, Mrs. Hercules. Oh, who stops? I would uh, ask all those present to ensure that their glasses are fully charged. Oh, man, it seems to be empty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey, Mrs. Slocum, you've got hollow legs, have you? <laughs> I now call upon Captain Peacock to propose the toast. Um, so Mrs. Granger, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> haven't got to that bit yet, Mrs. Slocum. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How can one sum up a career like Mr. Granger's? Quickly, I hope. <laughs> he started <laughs> literally on the ground floor, in haberdashery, and after two short years was given his own counter in stationery. Already the writing was on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it spelt success. <laughs> His, his amazing drive and enthusiasm soon came to the notice of the Board of Management and he was transferred to bathroom furniture, mm. where he remained for five triumphant years before moving on... Flushed with success. <laughs> ...before moving on to gentlemen's shoes. But already, one might say, his foot was on the ladder. <laughs> Thank you. From there, fortunately for us and Grace Brothers, he finally found his niche in gentlemen's trousers. <laughs> What's a niche? I would like you now to raise your glasses as I close on these words from Pope. Oh, happy the man whose wish and care a few paternal acres bound, content to breathe his native air in his own ground. Very nice. Very nice. Pity he lives in a flat in Elton. <laughs> Could always buy him a window bulb. I, I ask you all to be upstanding. I give you Mr. Granger coupled with Mrs. Granger. Mr. Mr. Granger, Granger coupled, coupled with Mrs. With Mrs. Granger. Mr. Granger, <laughs> speech, 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 speech. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Come along, Mr. Granger. Come along, Mr. Granger. Well. Dear friends, my heart is very full. My glass is very empty. <laughs> Great honour which you have done, Mrs. Granger and myself, in giving us this wonderful banquet tonight with the chicken and all these magnificent presents, especially this uh, combined uh, shoehorn and back scratcher. <laughs> You know, as I look back over the years, they all seem to have passed very quickly. But I shall always have very happy recollections of you all. And uh, all that I really can say now is thank you. Oh, isn't it a sub? Did it sub? <laughs> Please keep it. <laughs> Pray silence for Mr. Rambo. Yes, th thank you, Mr. Matt. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Granger, 
As you know, it has always been the custom for young Mr. Grace to announce whether or not he wishes employees who achieve the age of 65 to take advantage of the pension scheme or to remain in the saddle. However, as you also know, young Mr. Grace is indisposed. It therefore falls to my lot to perform the ceremony. And... <laughs> it's young Mr. Grace. <laughs> Is that young Mr. Grace? Old Mr. Grace doesn't get about much. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Grace. I hope I'm not too late. No, you're not too late, Mr. Grace. Now, there's still plenty of cabinet put in a left, Mr. Grace. I suppose he's come to hand over the clock. Yes, just in time. Continue, Mr. Grace. Oh, please do, Mr. Rumbold. <laughs> well, I was about to remark how very much we appreciate the long years of devoted service, the great consideration that you've always shown for all those with whom you have worked. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we feel, we definitely feel that after all these long years, you have truly earned a rest. And therefore, all that remains is for this to be presented. Here you are, sir. <laughs> oh, thank you. This is a surprise. <laughs> I'm very nice of you all. I I've given a lot of these away, but I've never got that. <laughs> well, my doctor says I shouldn't be out, so, uh, so I'm now going. Um, Another five years, and you'll be getting one of those, Ernest. <laughs> well, goodbye, all. Goodbye, Mr. Grace. Oh, get it well. Thank you, Mr. Grace. Oh, thank you, Mr. Grace. Thank you, Mr. Grace. <laughs> well, Ernest, it, uh, it looks as if you're staying on. It does. Of course, I'm very happy about it, but I, I should have liked a bit more leisure, you know. Could I have Monday off? Certainly not. <laughs> well, if he's not leaving, he won't be needing his presence, will he? <laughs> oh, he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, and so say all. Thank <laughs> you. 